Well, I wanna start by just welcoming anybody that's new to CCV. It's really our honor that you'd be here and we really hope that you come back. Uh, we've been in a series the past few weeks called The Rhino, the Bison, and the Lamb. And what we've been doing throughout the series is simply just looking at ways that God oftentimes takes animals in scripture and uses them as examples for how we're supposed to live out our faith. And so if you haven't been with us, week one we actually looked at the rhino and we talked about having a forward moving faith because rhinos don't know how to back up, they only move forward and they have thick skin which is what many of us need, especially in a culture that continues to attack Christianity. Week two, which is last weekend, uh, if you were here, you know that our teaching pastor, Mark Moore, came out with a lamb actually on his shoulders, if you were here, which I thought was really great. He had a really great message about having a dependent faith. And many people started texting me after they saw Mark have a lamb on his shoulders, and they said, you should come out with a cat on your shoulders. Like, I was getting texts like that. And I thought, well, I couldn't do that because if I put a cat on my shoulders, it would scratch and bite me and I'd have bite marks the whole rest of the service because that's what cats do, you know? So, but no, uh, this weekend though, as we conclude the series, we're talking about the bison. And there's so much we have to learn about this image in scripture of the bison and having a, a faith that perseveres. Because believe it or not, the bison is the only animal that we know of that when a storm approaches, every other animal runs away from the storm, the bison turns and faces the storm and walks straight into the storm. Why? Because believe it or not, the fastest way to get through the storm is to walk into it, not to run away from it. And my guess is that there are some of you here today that are facing a storm in your life. And it could be with your business, it could be with work or a family member or a child or your marriage. It could be a relationship, it could be your health. And what I hope you walk away today with is, is being inspired to face your storm, to walk with perseverance through the storm. Actually, the psalmist in Psalm 92, 10 says this, you have made me strong as a charging bison, to face the storm. And then James chapter one, verse two through four says this, consider it pure joy, my brothers, and sisters, whenever you face trials, storms of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. And that's the goal is to allow the storms of life to not pull you down, but to let them develop and mature your faith. And uh, I think God's gonna do a great work today. We have a special guest with us. I couldn't bring a bison on stage, so I decided to bring the next best thing. He's the man I believe represents the bison more than any other man I know on earth. His name's Rich Froning, and I want you to see this video to see a little bit more about who he is. Rich Froning is a husband to Hillary Froning, father of three, uh, Lakeland, Trice, Richard III, and Violet. I compete in CrossFit, have competed in CrossFit for going on 12, 13 years now. Rich Froning is the fittest man on the planet for the third straight year. We started in 2009 just watching some CrossFit.com videos and they put out some videos of the CrossFit games. Like I said, I didn't even know you could really compete in it. Um, and we did some of the workouts and our times were pretty decent and pretty comparable. And I was like, oh, I was talking to my cousin. And I was like, ah, oh, we should try to compete next year. Went to the CrossFit games in 2010, got second place. 2011 through 14 as an individual, won the CrossFit games. 15 and 16, we won on a team. 17, we got second. 18 and 19, we competed on a team and won. CrossFit had become this idol and you know, it, it had defined who I was. And you know, the, the title fittest on earth, I would be lying if I said, you know, pride doesn't creep in every once in a while. Luckily, I had 
uh, a really good, strong mentor, and uh, he said, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? I said, of course I would. You know, I grew up Christian, I was saved when I was 13, and then I started thinking, and am I living how Jesus called me to live? And um, at that point, I was like, no, I'm not. It's more of like, what can you do for me versus what can I do for you? And so, uh, for me, at that point, my faith completely switched. And so that's when I got the tattoo, Galatians 6, 14. And man, I never boast in anything except for the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, which has been crucified to me and I to the world. And for me, that's, it keeps me humble. Four of my personal uh, values are faith, family, fitness, and service. And so from a faith standpoint, we try to go by what Jesus said, red words. That's what we try to live by. Family is, you know, my immediate family, obviously, but our mayhem family, our community here. Um, and then fitness is the obvious, it's our, we're a fitness company. And then service, we wanna serve. Uh, we wanna serve like Jesus called us to serve. Uh, we wanna get out in the community, we wanna do things um, to, to help. It doesn't matter what I do uh, or who I am in CrossFit or who I am in competition. Um, it's, it's about him and, and what I can do for him. Help me give a huge CCV welcome to Rich Froning. Oh, we're, uh, we're crazy honored to have you here. Thanks for having me. Oh, how are them legs feeling? My legs, we'll talk about that later. Oh, okay. We'll talk about that you later. We'll talk about that um, now? But I, I am feel, I'm feeling a lot. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better about wearing longer sleeves. Uh, it's very uh, slimming, yeah. very slimming. Look Thank good. you. Look I good. didn't want you to Fit. feel. I didn't want you to feel intimidated by my preacher guns. I you know? understand. So, yeah, you get carrying that. that Bible gets that, it, heavy. It, it, you know? it, it's heavy. It's carrying God's, everybody's cross. God's word. That's true. That? That's true. Legs it, strong. Yeah, legs strong. Uh, hey, for, for those of you that don't know much about CrossFit, believe it or not, it's an exploding phenomenon. Every year, um, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people compete across the, the world to to get to. Uh, the epic competition, the CrossFit Games, and they crown the fittest man on earth. And the CrossFit Games and are woman. a test. Of, and woman. And woman, that's right. And um, they test your physical endurance to a place that it just pushes you beyond what, what many people can even imagine. And Rich, you've been crowned, the, for, you're the first person ever to be crowned fittest man on earth four years in a row. Then you switched over to the team competition. Your team has won four times. Um, I think... The way I can describe you for people that aren't familiar with CrossFit, the way Michael Jordan talk, is talked about in basketball, the way Wayne Gretzky is talk, talked about in hockey, that's Rich Froning to CrossFit, an epic legend. And here we are talking about the bison this weekend and, and having this faith that can persevere to push through. You chose the bison to be really your symbol of, of who you are. You live on a bison ranch. He sells bison products. He has t-shirts. These this are ladies. Uh, yep. These are your, four, you call them first your, four ladies. You call them your ladies. Well, they're all ladies. They're okay. females. All right. We have right. one male, Custer. Ooh, yeah. lucky guy. It's big. Lucky guy. Big, yeah. Real lucky guy. So, but the bison is the symbol for you. You have t-shirts and, and some of them say into the storm. I have yep. one of those myself. Um, Tell us about how you got inspired. I mean, how the bison even inspired you. Yeah, yeah. We So I grew up not on a working farm, ranch, or anything like that, but we had some acreage. Uh, my mom uh, grew up as a farmer. My grandfather um, raised crops for Kroger, and uh, he had nine kids. They were Catholic, so a lot of workers. Um, and so growing up, uh, we had chores, and I hated it. I hated it with a passion. I was like, you know, None of my other friends have to go out and do this stupid stuff that we're doing. And anytime I'd have friends over, my parents were like, ooh, more people to help weed around trees or pick up apples that have fallen off the trees. Yeah. Um, I hated it. But looking back now, the, the hard work that was instilled in us and the time that I you know, got to share with my parents, and then my parents are the two hardest working people in any room, hmm. um, it, it really shaped who I was. So I was thinking, all right, you know, I want to have that for my kids. Um, I want to do something that, you know, we can do together. And so, 
we have this land, uh, you know, we've acquired some acres throughout the years, and it's kind of where I grew up, and my best friend growing up, um, live, we lived a mile apart, uh, we live a mile apart again, and we talked, and he started having kids, we started having kids, and we wanted to have something that the kids had to take care of, and we were both firefighters back years ago, and uh, on his off days, he raised cattle um, as kind of a side job, and so we looked into cattle. Uh, the more and more I started looking into it, I was like, man, everybody has cattle, you know? Like, we, we were just gonna have, you know, 10, 15, you know, do whatever, and um, I was like, let's do bison. And Matt's like, I don't know anything about bison. I was like, me either. Uh, so we did a ton of research on them. Uh, they're an incredible animal. Basically, they say there was anywhere from 40 to 60 million um, in North America, and we killed them down into less than 1,000. Wow. And through conservation and other things, they've kind of made a comeback. And um, it's one of, the, one of the most incredible stories, actually, just of an animal that's just built to survive. And so learned a ton, researched a ton, and they look really cool in a t-shirt. They so, sure do. You know, sure. And, you know, looking out the front yard, drinking coffee, uh, and seeing bison roam in the front yard is yeah. pretty awesome I know. Um, experience. Yeah. And I just, I, just, I just love that it's the only animal, like you said, that will sit there and face the storm. Yeah. You know, and, and there's so much, I think, even from Scripture that we can really learn from that. Um, people have seen your success in CrossFit. I mean, you're at the peak, you know, pinnacle of success. Some people might think, well, what's that guy know about facing real storms? Like storms like, you know, most of us go through with, you know, marriage or kids or life. But you've really faced some storms. Um, talk to us about some of those personal storms. I know with your cousin and even uh, with Hillary. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, you know, I think... We're all, we're all human and we all face things. And um, for me, you know, it started honestly at really young age. You know, we start with my cousins, but also uh, my parents have been divorced, uh, well, twice from each other. Uh, once Which when I was, interesting. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 Not many people can say that. Um, they were divorced, got divorced when I was about one, got back together when I was four, and then divorced again when I was 15. So Which I, have, I have incredible challenging. parents. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, it's hard going through that as a kid and not understanding that. Um, my parents were super supportive and always present in my life. So I really can't complain about that. Uh, they just weren't great together. But going through that as a kid and, you know, your parents being separated is hard. And, yeah. um, but for me, the, you know, some of the most challenging things in my early life were I had two cousins. Um, I'm one of 25 first cousins on my mom's side. 32 of us are boys. Um, and my one cousin, when I was 14, um, they w told us when we were younger that it was a hunting accident, but it was suicide. Mm -hmm. um, and he was two years younger than me. So that was a, it was a very hard uh, time in my life to kind of process that and go through that. We were really close. And then his older brother, um, those two are one of six, um, he passed, my, my best friend on, in the world, we were 12 days apart, um, passed away in 2007 in a car accident. Um, and so to go through those two things and being a firefighter as well, to just realize that um, Life is, is fragile, it's, it's not, uh, we're not invincible. You know, you're 18 years old and you think, ah, you know, nothing bad's ever gonna happen to me. Yeah. And, um, to, go to, to go through those things at such a young age uh, really matures you pretty quick. Uh, still pretty immature, but you know, some things that it matures you in. Yeah. Uh, but then yeah, fast forward to mine and Hillary's struggles with um, infertility and uh, going through that and just seeing, you know, going through to different doctor's appointments, different, um, getting poked with needles and seeing Hillary try different things with medicine and nothing work and then look at pieces of paper and talk to doctors that say, yeah, we can't really explain what's going on. And um, to have, you know, a plan of, me and Hillary had a plan that we're, we're gonna have three kids and um, adopt one at three, three biological kids and then adopt one. Um, and God laughed and said, I got a better plan. And now we have three amazing adopted children. Um, but I don't even think of them as adopted anymore. They're just my children. Hmm. And you, you think adoption as well. And we've had, you know, Lakeland, we got right before I competed in my final CrossFit games as an individual. One month before that, we had Lakeland. Um, we found out we were getting her three weeks, like, Within three weeks, we had a baby. It was it was mass chaos. Yeah. Most parents have nine months. Yeah, yeah, you we didn't have weeks. much. Um, and then we were in the room. Um, I cut the cord on Lakeland, all that. Competed at the games two weeks later. 
uh, to have that. Then we had three failed adoptions before we had Trice. Um, Trice was a, a born in the NICU and then in the hospital for another two weeks after that. And then Hillary was stuck in Florida for another week after that. So I had a, a Lakeland at the time who was two years old, two and a half. Um, and I was also competing at regionals the week after that as well. And then we still stay in contact with Lakeland's birth mother. And so Hillary got a call one day and said, hey, I, the birth mom said, hey, I had another baby and can't keep her. Would you guys take her? Wow. And so we had Violet um, within a week. And so it's been, been an incredible journey, but you just talk about the, the highs and lows that go with adoption and watching uh, one having the disappointment and things like that when they don't happen, but watching my wife go through that, the person that you love the most on the planet, uh, go through those things and just see that disappointment is uh, it's tough. Yeah, and I, I, looking at you and your life, it looks like the storms have really shaped you. For sure. You know, really, and, and you know, if anybody here has gone through um, infer, you know, in, infertility, or you've ex, you know someone that has, my opinion as a pastor, there's not many things in life you can go through that are more painful than that. It's helpless. It, it really is, about it. you know, and so, um, we've had deep friends of ours that have gone through it that we, we walk through, and I love how it shaped you, and you've just kept walking into the storm and pushing forward and seeing what's happened. I want, I want you to talk about one of the specific storms that happened in your life that was a really big deal for you, but it helped sh shape your faith. Walk us through the, the 2010 CrossFit Games. Yeah, so I'll, I'll back up a little bit. So I was born into a Catholic family, baptized when I was three months old, some whatever the, I don't really, I, I'm not a good Catholic, or wasn't a good Catholic. So <laughs> but baptized as a baby. I don't know the rules. I was baptized yeah. when I was a baby. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I grew up in a faith-filled home. Um, my, I'm pretty sure my grandma talks, like has a direct line to God. She goes to Mass every day. Violet, who we named our daughter after, yeah. is a saint. Yeah. Um, she's incredible. My dad's dad and mom were both incredible in their faith. My mom and both parents. So I grew up and had that foundation, um, but never really had it for me. So I fast forward to the CrossFit Games, um, you know, I grew up playing sports, grew up playing baseball, uh, had a, you know, opportunity to play some college baseball, decided that wasn't my thing once I started it, was a firefighter for years. In that process, had a, um, a professor at Tech that was like, hey, a lot of military police, fire, do this thing called CrossFit, you should try it. Um, so 2009, started doing CrossFit, found out three or four months later you could compete in it, and uh, decided to sign up the next year. Um, at the time, it went sectionals, if you were top 15 at your sectional, you went to the regionals, the top five at regionals went to the games. And so it was on the way to spring break, so we might as well, you know, um, right before we're gonna party. And so go to sectionals, show up, and there's 80 guys that look like they're straight from the movie 300. So um, <laughs> we, there's, we decided that, all right, if I'm not in the top 25 after day one, top 30, we'll go ahead and get an early jump on spring break. Um, first event, finish, dying like everybody else. You don't really know anything, so my cousin goes and checks the whiteboard where they wrote out, you know, who were the times he walks back with a really, like, confused look on his face. He's like, you won that event. Hmm. I was like, I did what? And so the rest of the weekend was just a complete shock and surprise. So we ended up hanging and staying out, you know, we might as well, because I was in first after day one. So we stayed there, um, finished first in the sectional, went to regionals. That was my whole goal that year, was to just make it to regionals. Ended up winning the region. Uh, went to the CrossFit Games with really the goal of not to get last. Yeah. And, uh, and talk about real quick, you, you, even Hillary would say this, you are the most competitive, I mean, you are competitive beyond competitive, Yeah, right? beyond competitive. Yeah. I talked about- Yeah, win at everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I blame my parents, it's completely their fault. Um, you know, we talked about the 32 <laughs> first cousins. Yeah. Um, you know, as a kid, they used to have us, we had ponds in Michigan where you swim and do all that stuff. And they're like, hey, let's see who can run around the pond the fastest. Let's see who can ride their bike the fastest. Who can swim across the pond. At the time, I thought it was this like TV show of who was the most dominant cousin, you know? And I was for sure. So, uh, no, I was also one of the older ones, so that counts. Um, but, and so I honestly thought that they were trying to see which one of us was the most physically dominant. Now I just realized they were trying to tire us out. Now that I have kids, yeah, I'm like, yeah. hey, go run around yeah. that pond. Yeah, hey, just run, back just, here. Just yeah. run, around, yeah. run another lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah run another lap. lap. I bet you, right. Let me see how long yeah. it takes you. Oh, I bet you can do it faster. Yeah. So I blame them. You know, it was, they yeah. think it's all fun and games and now it's ruined my life. No, I'm just kidding. I think it's good, but, it, but it's good for people to know you are so competitive. You get to the CrossFit games yep. and you're, you're competing. competing. Tell, tell, yeah. tell us, yeah. tell us so, what happened. You know, like I said, I'm the, the phrase, I'm happy to be there and I'm putting this show on like, oh, you know, I just don't want to get last. I really want to win this thing. Like, I'm, sure. I'm there to win. 
And so I'm doing pretty well. Um, I'm actually leading the thing going into the final three events. Well, I didn't know it was three events at the time. So they take the top, I believe it was the top 18 men, top 18 women. They put us in a room, no, no contact with the outside. And they're like, all right, we're gonna do some events. We're not telling you what it is. We're not telling you how many events there are. We're not telling you anything. Um, but six people disappeared every 45 minutes and you'd never see them again. Starts messing with your head a little bit, right? Yeah. And so, keeps going, keeps going, and finally, it's like they walk in, they're like, all right, let them next six. And so we walk out there and you're like, all right, is there gonna be lions, tigers, you know, flames? Like, what's going on? So, you gotta take your shirt off, it's the CrossFit uniform. And uh, <laughs> Dave Castro, the director of the CrossFit Games, who has never once taken anybody's well-being into account in any of these events, looks at us and says, hey, you may want to keep your shirt on. It's pretty hot out there. That's the safe for church version. Yeah. Um, it's pretty hot out there. So I'm like, all right, I'll put my shirt back on. And uh, so we walk out there, and it's 135 degrees on the mat. Like somebody had one of those guns that you can like test the temperature. And so Dave starts literally saying what the workout is. And I'm the last person on the floor because they bring us out in reverse order of six to down to one. Because you're leading. And yeah. you're mass chaos because I have no idea what's going on. The only reason I knew what movement to do is I looked at the guy next to me and he dropped down and started doing push-ups. So I'm, then I'm just listening to my judge. What turned out the first event was 30 push-ups, climb over a wall, 21 overhead squats, climb back over the wall. And you had seven minutes to do it. At seven minutes, they stopped everybody. I'm the only person that finished it. So I'm like, I'm crushing this, you know? Like, I'm, I got this thing in the bag. So I go to the next, I didn't know there was another event. Poor soul. And uh, <laughs> so go to the next event, and it's shoulder to overhead and toes to bar. Look like I'm, had way, been overserved because I'm exhausted, hot, whatever. The video is pretty good. I, I think I'd seventh, eighth in that event. Not great, not terrible, enough, I thought. Um, the final event was five or six burpees over a six foot wall and three rope climbs. Didn't think anything of it other than my dad growing up, we had a rope in the barn um, and he said, do not use your legs because that's for sissies, also the safer church version. Yeah. Um, so I never learned how to climb a rope with my legs. Uh, thanks dad. And so when you do three events previous to that that are all grip and you're yeah. exhausted, um, you're trying to climb a rope with no feet. There's people literally taking their shoelaces off of their shoes and trying to teach me how to climb the rope. I think we have. Yeah, I mean, have, so, have so have picture this. We, we have some oh, video. There we go. You're in the lead. All he's got to do is finish this event to win the CrossFit Games. And, and bam. There it goes. Wow. Because yeah. you weren't using your legs. No, it wasn't. Well, I used my legs when I hit the ground. Oh, see, there's a little trying here. This is a second, I think, climb. And then what you see here is my hands are gonna burn off as well. You see, they're just sliding down oh, the rope. Friction's gosh. not good. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was the final event. Um, I ended up, I don't even remember what place I got in that event. Uh, I just know that overall, the way they used to score it was whatever place you got was that many points you got. And so the person with the lowest amount of points wins. And so I lost the CrossFit games by three points over the entire weekend. Yeah. Um, and so, not only, you know, we talked about it last service, but getting second um, is not good, but when the winner gets $25,000 and second place gets a $500 gift card to Under Armour, um, <laughs> and then gets sponsored by Reebok a couple weeks later and doesn't even use said Under Armour gift card. Yeah, you can't even um, use it. Yeah, so there's that. But, you know, for me, there was, I had, you know, I use CrossFit here in this instance, but if I look back, um, you know, my whole life compete had de defined who I was or whatever I was doing at the time, you know, baseball, uh, firefighting, and then CrossFit at this time had become my identity. And yeah. each time that I'd done that, I was just searching for something new to define who I was. And when it's, you know, people kind of get upset with me when I say it was a failure to get second, um, especially my wife who's in the everybody gets a medal crowd. Um, for me, it was a complete failure. I, you know, it was, uh, especially having it in my grasp, yeah. literally, um, and, and taken. And so, for me, it had left this hole in, in, in my life, in my heart, you know. I wasn't like completely depressed, but I was just like searching for this thing of like, what, who am I, where am yeah. I going? And yeah. so, um, thankfully, I had a good group of guys that, um, and girls that I just started a Bible study with. Like I said, I'd. Grew up in a faith, I said all that to say that I was, grew up in a faith background, 
Um, but that whole time it was a, what I think of as religion instead of faith and you know, these are rules and they're there to be judged against and you know, I th thought of as God as like, hey, I'm gonna read these verses and how can you help me, God? You know, what can you do for me? Um, and I had this switch where I, you know, I had a, a good friend of mine that said, hey, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? I was like, yeah, of course. And then when I really started thinking about it and I'd really gotten into my Bible and started reading the Gospels and reading about Jesus, I was like, man, I'm not living like Jesus called me to live and I'm not trying to glorify him with, with what I've been given. And so um, for me, it was a complete switch of, hey, God, what can you do for me to what can I do for you? And, um, you know, that's when I got the tattoo, Galatians 6, 14, may I never boast in anything except for the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, which has been crucified to me and I to the world. Um, read where Jesus got baptized when he was 30. I was 23, 24 at the time and decided, hey, why can't I get baptized? I want to make that nothing. I don't think there's anything wrong with, uh, you know, child baptism or um, but I wanted to make that choice. Yeah. And, you wanted it to be your decision. I wanted it to be my yeah. decision. And uh, I say all that to say, you know, that next year I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm competing from this newfound faith. You know, I'm, it doesn't matter. It doesn't define who I am. Um, you know, I'm going to just go compete and uh, I'm still going to try to win. Like, I hate the whole, like, oh, Christians are soft and they don't compete with the same ferocity of, that word, ferocity, ferocity, whatever. You get the point. Yeah. But they don't compete from the same place as most people because, yeah. you know, Christians are soft. No. That's not it at all. But, so I'm going to the first event in 2011, and I'm reading my Bible, trying to get, get my mind right, and Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans for, I have for you, declares the Lord. I'm like, all right, we're good, you know? Like, we're good. 28th in that first event. Wow. I'm like, all right, God, I guess I'm supposed to be a humble loser here, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> what are you trying to show me? And so, but it was, I say all that to say it was freeing that I, I wasn't worried about who I was, you know, it wasn't gonna define, my, my overall placement wasn't gonna define uh, who I was, yeah. and so I could compete from that. You know, I literally went from the lowest of lows, 28th place in that first event, and ended up winning that year, um, because I, I could compete and let that go. Yeah, and, and you won for the next, you won four years in a row. Years, yeah. yeah. What I love about that story is I just, I just think God took this moment where you utterly, I mean, you, you, you fell off the rope. Mm -hmm. You smashed down. I think you actually injured your heel. Heel and, you yeah, yeah. Some other parts. Yeah, um, my butt. And bone. Yeah. So you. My ischium. Yeah, ischium. I didn't know that. I didn't know that's what it was called. Yeah. Okay, all right. We're learning something new here. But God, God took this utter, you know, really hard thing in your life and he used it to propel your faith. You get baptized. You really start going all in with your faith. And for the next four years, you win. Then you win four team competitions. I mean, God just really did a miracle, a miracle, and I think that all of us need to know that God can use those tough things in your life to really push you forward if you'll use it to draw closer to God, um, and I think that's what you did, and I love that you got the tattoo, yeah. and you know, because I think, you know, God, I think, was preparing you because when you're labeled the fittest man on earth, I mean, that's got to develop a little bit of pride. I mean, you can't, you can't help. You, you right. said it there. Yeah. And yet this verse is really centering you back on, no, if I'm gonna boast, I'm not gonna boast in what I do because too many of us put our identity in what we do. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna boast in who I am and who I am is defined not by what I do. Who I am is defined by who I belong to. Right. And when you belong to Jesus and fully to Jesus, that transforms your life. And I think that's your, that's your story, For which sure. I love. And now you're using your platform to go share your faith and you have this great platform that you're, really sharing Jesus with so many people, and, and, and we applaud that, yeah, we really do. Like I said, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be where I am without that faith and without Jesus. Yeah. None of us would. Yep. Well, I want you to talk to us about the, the CrossFitter's relationship with pain. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you and, I mean, it's like just pain every single day. Every day. Push, pushing your body to limits where like, it's just, it's beyond comprehension. And last, I had never done CrossFit before. It's easy, right? until last, uh, on Friday night. Crushed it. Friday night, um, he took me and worked me out with him. <laughs> Did great, did a good job. And all I can say is I have never felt that much pain in my entire life, <laughs> really. And I think we have a little video footage our team put together, which I'm not very happy about, but they, they told me to show it, so we can, you can show great. it here. Yeah, you can see this footage. All right, I, I, I need some prayer. I need some prayer because this guy's about ready, about ready to work me out. So 
You want and, some fun? And I think, I think you, you're gonna, you said you're probably gonna go a little easy on me. Yeah, yeah, we'll take it easy. Perfect. Okay, all right, let's go. Let's do it. To get back on, you can do 10 air squats and 10 push ups. Okay, 10 air squats, 10 push ups. Yeah. Good man, I don't know. I sitting down a lot. I didn't realize that until just now. They get a lot of you I, drinking your water. Yeah, or... I'm drinking water. You never drink water one time. I'm sitting down. You you put me through some pain. That's what you did. Actually, to quote him, he said the first thing he put us through. He said when we got done, you said that was a little bit mean. <laughs> this is what you said <laughs> to me. The assault yeah. bike is always mean. Oh man. Yeah. I want you to know. Well, after I got done with that workout, I could not feel my legs. I really couldn't. I have ibuprofen in my body right now. <laughs> I really do. I'm, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sore. This but, the sermon sponsored by ibuprofen? Yeah, the sermon sponsored. <laughs> but you, wh what's so interesting to me is your job is to get people to lean into pain mm -hmm. and to push through the pain. You actually have this quote. You said, the human body is an incredible machine, but most people only get out of the machine what their mind allows them to. And most people their mind actually limits what they can do because they don't really push through the pain. Talk to us about how do you get people to push through, to walk into the storm and just not, not give up? I mean, how do you do that? Yeah, I think um, you know, there's a lot of people that with that quote, there's a lot of people that I competed against that were probably more physically talented than I was. Um, but the mental side of it, I, I look at you know, growing up, my parents, I look at, you know, Obviously, I had a great, incredible high school kind of sports background, my faith, all those things, like this perfect storm of yeah. um, just reasons why I can, I guess, lean into that pain. But for me, it was just this flip. I flipped a switch one day, and I was like, the good things happen through adversity and through, there's a difference in like pain, I'm talking working out, pain and injury. Yeah. Um, pain is something that, hey, I know if I do this, there's gonna be some physiological benefit from if we look at exercise science. We know, um, you know, increased VO2 max, in increased lactic threshold, those types of things. Um, it, it works in life as well. I mean, how many times in life you appreciate things way more when you had to work for them or they were challenging, whereas something that's given to you or if you're just kind of stuck in this one, you know, not moving forward, um, it, it's just not, Life is not life without, just, we're not looking for trouble, um, but there's, there's some adversity and, and we, we're gonna come out better on the other side of adversity. Yeah. If we push through it. We push through it. I mean, Jesus, Jesus said himself, he said, in this world you will have trouble, mm -hmm. but take heart, I've overcome the world. And part of how you can overcome your trouble is you have to learn to push through it. And I was in so much pain, just kept thinking, I gotta push through this. You texted me this morning and you said, it was a little bit of a mean text. He said, how are your legs? That was the only thing it said. Valid text question, message, you, know? you know? I was just and worried I, about you. And I, yeah, I bet you were, yeah. I said, and so I began to describe that I can barely walk, and you texted something that I felt, felt like was so profound. You said, movement is medicine. That's the only thing you said, because you told me one of the best things you can do when you're in pain, especially even physically, but think about this spiritually and emotionally, when we get in pain, we think the best thing to do is just lay down and stop and just like, you know, be la you know, lazy. And what he was explaining to me is physically, you actually, the best thing you can do for your body is to start a, some movement. And as I started thinking about that, I thought, how much do some of us maybe need to hear today, if you're in a storm and you wanna give up, movement is your medicine. Just take that next step 
and keep moving because no storm lasts forever, nope. right? No storm lasts forever, we just have to keep moving. And I thought, that was really pro- I thought that was really profound and there's so many analogies between CrossFit and this pushing through the pain and just with what we go through in life ourselves. Um, I want you to shift a little bit and say you're so competitive. I mean, you really are. Unfortunately. And you know, you're, gonna, you're gonna take on you know, your, what you're doing with CrossFit and many of us here today, we have a job that we're in that we wanna win in and we wanna maybe win in a hobby. How do you make sure that in all the things you're trying to win in right now, you don't lose at home or with your kids or wife? How do you make sure you win there and with your faith? What, do you, what are you doing to make sure that stays intact? Yeah, I think, you know, over the years, I've, I've done a bad job of that in different areas. You know, it's something that we have to continually be um, critical of and, and be willing to take um, some ownership in that and have people that are gonna hold you accountable. I think people um, having community mm. uh, to hold you accountable is huge, whether that's other men or women in your life, um, your spouse, whatever that is. But for me, I look at it as, you know, I. Just to make it simple, I have a, a faith category, a family category, and fitness category. And every day, um, I try to um, have a completely, you know, look at it and, and completely non-biased opinion and say, all right, how did I do in my faith today? Was I in the word? Did I pray? Um, did I live out, um, live how Jesus called us to live? And maybe give myself a score one through 10. Uh, same with family, you know, did I, when I had time other than, you know, like you have things in life like a job that you are providing for your family and things like that that you have to take care of. But when I was at home, was I on my phone looking at something, you know, news or whatever it was. I actually got rid of social media off my phone because I knew it was a weakness of mine. I, don't, wow. I haven't had it, I haven't looked at social media in a year. But wow. that's, you know, just something to use. Um, you know, I look at, all right, did I, could I have gotten in the floor and played with the kids? Could I have, you know, taken them and done something? And then also, for me, fitness is the easiest one. It's something I have to do. I move, I have to move every day. Um, I feel like it's the one I'm most selfish about that I'm like, I'll make sure I do that. So that one I usually don't really have to worry about, but the, the, the faith and family one, you can have really good days, and I look at it the same way I do fitness. It's consistency, and consistency over time and every day is a new day. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if I had a good day in faith and family the day before, tomorrow's a new day and I could have a bad day there. Or if I had a bad day there, I try to let it go and I'm gonna do better tomorrow. And so um, for me that works pretty well to, to realize that hey, every day is new and, and you, gotta, you gotta be critical and, and look at ways that you can improve or when you do have a really good day, not get, you know, a little big headed about it where you're like, oh, I crushed it today, you know? Tomorrow doesn't really matter, so. Yeah, that's good. Would you, of those three, faith, family, fitness, would you say one of them helps drive the others more than, more than the other? Um, I feel like faith and family for me are pretty intertwined, you know? Like yeah. my, my faith, I try to live that out with my kids. My family is incredibly important mm. um, for me and Hillary, you know, like I said, coming from such a large family and then how hard um, it was to create that family. Um, I'm, you know, hyper protective and want to spend as much time as I can with them. So, uh, and then, like I said, fitness is just who I am. I have to move. Like, yeah. I think Hillary's finally realized after 12 years of being together, 13 years, that it's just better to let me have 30 minutes to go do something and work yeah, out. Work out. Um, it's going to be better for both of our psych- yeah. uh, psychological and uh, our relationship. I think I heard her say one time, if you don't work out, it's bad for everybody. Yes. Yeah. So, but. Yeah. Um, Tell me you know, about the, the CrossFit community aspect. I mean, it's such a big part. It's why I respect the CrossFit aspect is there's so much community aspect. And you switched from being an individual to competing as a team. And tell me about that, that shift and what that did for you. Yeah, you know, I, I grew up playing team sports. Team sports are, are where my heart is. Um, I, I like being on a team. I like suffering for other people. I like... Um, helping or being a part of a group that succeeds. You know, as an individual, I had an incredible uh, support group and people that were surrounded with me. But when I won, it was just me on the floor where with a team I get to celebrate that and I get to see what the, you know, what they've put in and it's just so much more rewarding. Um, But it's, it's actually also a metaphor for just the greater CrossFit community. You know, everybody sees what we do at the CrossFit Games and thinks that's CrossFit. That's not CrossFit. It's the CrossFit community and the, the shared suffering. And, you know, you learn a lot about somebody when 
you know, they're going through adversity or yep. going and, you know, doing a workout, but you learn a lot about yourself. Yep. And so, um, it's just so, it's so much more rewarding and so much more fun to be on a team. Yeah, and I, and I would say for anybody here that's not a part of a really strong community, especially that has a faith aspect to it, that's why we continually challenge you to get into a CCV group because you have to have community. It makes the highs better, but especially when you're in one of those suffering periods, you have to have other people around you. Yep. Um, all right, I'm gonna shift gears just a little bit because one of the things that's so interesting to me is I've watched all these workouts you do in CrossFit and the one that is, is interesting, you, there's like a, a workout, you, you walk on your hands. Yes, I can walk on my hands. Can, would, would you show us, would you, I mean, is it, is it weird, would you show us like walking on your hands? You guys, would you guys like to see Rich like walk on I'll his hands? Deal. Huh? I'll walk on my hands if you walk on your hands. I'm, I can't really, no, no, I can't on. really. Come on, come on, come on. I'll do it first. Oh man. You already, wor- you already worked me out yesterday. All right, let's see it. See, he's co- see that, that's, that's impressive. Now, let's see you do it. I don't, I'll help you. Make sure your shirt's sucked in. I'm going to make sure my shirt's I heard, sucked in. I heard we have to make sure your fly zip, too. There's that's no- a low blow, man. Okay, sorry. That's a low blow. All right, so just, just get up on your hands. Yeah, make sure you keep those elbows locked out. Okay, I got right, you. I'm going to get up on my hands. There oh, you go. Ah, okay. All right. Nice. See? Man, it's just. You got the legs last night. You got the arms today. Now what I'm good. starting to realize is CrossFit's pretty easy. It is pretty easy. Yeah. So it's I mean, really, you want to try it without me? That, <laughs> were, you, were you giving me that much help? You were holding my legs. I got you. All right. It's not helping that much. Hey, um, I, I've just really appreciated how, and the more I've got to know you and Hillary, just how your faith has really improved every area of your life. I mean, sure. it's improved CrossFit. It's improved your marriage your family. I'd love for you, just as we close out, I'd love for you to just look in the camera and really just talk to the person here today that maybe has never gone all in with Jesus. You're kind of playing right now. You kind of show up to church every once in a while and maybe, but you, you've never really gone all in with Jesus like you did when you got baptized and said, I'm, I'm all in now. Yep. Talk to them for just a minute. Um, what would you tell them of just compelling them to say, it's time, it's time for you to go all in. Yeah, you know, for years, like I said, I grew up in a faith-filled home. Um, I was searching for the next thing to do uh, versus, you know, who Jesus was. I have 10 medals, you know, eight gold and two silver that we don't really talk about the silver, but um, they're all sitting in a closet somewhere in a box. Um, those are still just things that I've done. Um, and so for me, you know, anybody that I, I try to talk to about faith, it, there's so much more to gain than there is to lose. You know, growing up for me, faith or religion, it was more religion, it was rules, it was, um, you know, the things that Jesus said were gonna be hard or uh, the Ten Commandments, whatever you wanna use as the, the standard. But it was these things that I couldn't do and that I was being judged against. Um, but I made that flip of religion to faith, and for me, faith, I gained so much more out of a relationship with Christ, and then I realized that those rules or the things that Jesus talked about were just how to have a good life, you know? They weren't things that were supposed to be, you know, guilty, Uh, you know, we talked about Catholic guilt, and there's nothing wrong, you know, with with looking at those things, but it's, I I gained so much more from a relationship with Jesus um, than I lost Hmm. by, you know, giving up the world, and so uh, for me, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, well, I, just, I hope someone hears that today, and please hear this, I love what you said. Christianity and the way of Jesus is never meant to hold you back. It's always meant to push you forward to have your best life ever. And that's what happens when you go all in, and I want you to know CCV's a church, we wanna help you with that. No matter where you are on your walk, whether you're brand new, you wanna take a next step, whether you've been a follower of Jesus for a while and you wanna start leading in a significant way, we're a place that can do that. Um, and help you on your journey. But can we just give Rich a huge round of applause for being with us? Appreciate it, brother. So awesome. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> hey, I think, uh, I think we really have a lot to learn um, from Rich and how Jesus has become the thing in his life that's caused him to push forward and have a bison type of faith, a perseverance kind of faith. Well, I hope you walk away encouraged and challenged today. Next weekend, we're gonna start a brand new series called Ambushed. Um, I cannot wait wait to teach through this series. I hope you bring someone with you. And uh, I wanna pray just to close us out and then we'll let you on your way. Father, thanks for just uh, Rich's story. 
Thank you for hearing how he's been through so many storms and yet you're the one that's carried him through them. And I pray for those today that are maybe dealing with a storm, would you help them remember that movement is medicine? We have to keep moving and, and realizing that no storm lasts forever. And would you help us push through with, with your strength? I pray for those today that do not know truly who you are. They haven't gone all in, they haven't been baptized. I pray that you might just even inspire them today that today's the day to make a decision to move forward, putting you at the center of their life. Would you help them realize that's the best decision they'll ever make? And Father, we just wanna keep glorifying you. We wanna keep lifting you up here at CCV. Would we do that well? We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Go out and have a great week, CCV.